Tonight, I kind of wanted to go over the authentication bypass that uh, was discovered recently uh, by a couple of vulnerability researchers. All right, so this is the research from, from these guys. They did a bunch of just like looking around Next.js um, and they found that you could bypass authentication by bypassing middleware. So the way that you can check authentication um, or authorization on a web application is you can either do it within the framework and it kind of handles the whole thing or you can use middleware, which allows you to kind of like modularly um, do your authentication and access control checks as you go through uh, and make a request. So say an application will make a request, it will go pass through the middleware and then it will um, then it will process and pass it to the server and that kind of thing. All right, so let's say we have, so we have our application, we have client, we have a server. And so client makes request to server. When, um, when the client makes that request, it will do a bunch of processing here. That's what we call middleware. So what, what happens is a request will happen and say, I want a resource. We want slash admin, right? So the, the, when the request comes through, the middleware will ask several questions. Like it will say, are you an admin? Are you authenticated? Are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. And so then if they are, then it will let the request go through. If not, the server, the middleware in this case, will pass on here a response saying 401 unauthorized. Um, and that's kind of, you know, one of the things that, that a server will do. Middleware kind of allows you to create some more granularity um, with your application. You make a request, it goes through the middleware, does a whole lot, a, a whole lot of processing and then it returns a response from the server whether it's unauthorized or whether it's okay um, with this vulnerability there it just was crazily simple so let me so it says Next.js is a React framework for building full stack web applications. Prior to these versions, it is possible to bypass authentic authorization checks within Next.js applications. If the authorization check occurs in the middleware. So obviously there's other ways you can do authorization checks, but if it occurs within the middleware, then you're vulnerable. If patching to a safe thing is reasonable, uh, infeasible, it is recommended that you prevent external users making requests that contain the X middleware sub request header from reaching your Next.js application. And this is the kind of the crux of the vulnerability where it lies. Um, basically what these guys found, if we scroll down to it, they found that in a previous version, there was this old piece of code um, that had this X middleware sub request header. And this, this was the kind of the beginning of how they, they checked. And so one of the things that it checks is if the middleware info name is present within it, then it will skip it. They also discovered that there is a function within Next.js that checks um, the amount of times that a request um, makes like a, a request is processed by middleware. So this, this piece of code here, we have our middleware thing. And then the reason why this piece of code exists. So it checks to see if the request has recursed five times, and then it will stop processing the request through the middleware. The reason why it does this is to prevent like denial of service attacks or like just requests like going over and over and over again. And then it will kind of stop the request from being processed anymore and just pass it on to the server. So what these guys found is that if you specify the name of the middleware five times, which is what stops 
like the request from being processed by the middleware, then it stops the authorization check within the middleware and just passes it to the server and the server says 200 okay, um, which is wild. Um, so it's a crazy way. Like they obviously did this on purpose because they didn't want denial of services uh, against these applications and these servers. Um, but at the end of the day, like this, this was a big finding and a massive like bypass that was actually pretty simple. It just needed someone to dig into and have a look for it, which is just crazy. To me, it's just crazy. The other thing is I found that, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Asset Note, they do some awesome uh, vulnerability research. They look into pre-auth bypasses um, and, and that kind of thing. They are an attack surface management platform and they want to make sure that their their customers are protected from like pretty much anything that's pre-auth and that kind of thing. Um, they posted today a new blog and I didn't get to read it before coming live. So that's something that I'd love to read again. I'm just going to post that in the chat because it's their stuff is always brilliant and worthwhile reading and just helpful. So if you want to dive deeper into this, they look at just kind of different ways to check for this vulnerability to see um, whether there's any better ways. And they even by the end of it, like I read a little bit, by the end of it, they create like a polyglot to be able to check servers um, and see if they're vulnerable uh, to this vulnerability. Yeah, um, so I thought I'd set up a little bit of a demo um, I hope that is kind of making sense. Like this is something very new. And for me, it's, it's a learning exercise to kind of explain what I'm seeing and what I'm learning. Um, and hopefully you guys can get something out of it. Um, now we're going to jump into Kali. We will set up a server. So we're just going to make a directory. Um, next underscore vuln and then from there um, I'm just going to check if we have which node okay so I need to install node okay so we need to sudo apt install npm, which is node package packet package manager. And we'll do an npx create dash and next dash app at 14.2.24, which is the vulnerable version. And we'll go on mid because it's the middleware so we click yes yep we just kind of click through all of these because it doesn't really matter to the actual vulnerability itself and then it will just build it all right so we've started our we've we've built our um application here it's a um it's a simple next.js application most of it is all done before what we did was we ran this command npx create next app and then the version number uh, mid uh, vol mid which is the the name of the application okay and so now we simply go npm run dev because we want to run it in development mode so now what it's going to do is going to start up the server while that's happening we will create our API. So we'll go dash P app API slash version one. All right, and we will go Vim app API slash V1 slash route dot JS. So we're going to create a route. 
what we're doing is we're creating a get request function and basically when the response that the server will return is hello API, you are authorized. And it's in JSON format. A pretty simple request. So we'll save that. And now in this directory, we want to create our middleware. And we'll copy our code. Now, to be honest, I didn't come up with this code. This was come up from a, a really great blog that kind of did a walkthrough of this. I've kind of refined it a little bit. Um, but basically we're going to import next response from next server. Um, and then we're going to create a function called middleware request and it's going to do a check. So we're going to create a constant with auth header. We're going to use request headers get authorization. So it's going to look at the headers of the request and check for the authorization header. Then it's going to ask the question if the authorization headers exist or not, whether it has the bearer token, which is my secret token. This could be anything like in any application, this may be a basic authentication token or, or just, or a JWT, it could be anything. But in our circumstance, we're gonna use the bearer token, my secret token. If it doesn't exist, then it will return the response unauthorized and the status 401, which is unauthorized and then finish. And then this, this function will occur in this path. So it will match against any request made to the API. Pretty simple. This is what we're talking about. Client sends a request to the server and then it goes through this middleware, makes the authorization check and we see how it works. Um, all right, so we've got our middleware. All right, so if we do this slash API slash V1, uh, did I make it? Yep, no, that's it. We get our error unauthorized. It's pretty simple, like we see it there. That's the, that's the error that we have set up. So, um, Let's add some velocity to that so we can see our request. So here we make our request. These are the, these are the, this is the request that we send off. We're requesting API version one. Um, we get our response back with unauthorized and here's our response error unauthorized. And that's what we said in the server. Now, if we add dash H, which is for header, and we add the authorization, authorization header bearer my secret token. We get a response. Hello API. We are you are authorized. Pretty simple, right? What we learned from the vulnerability is that because the middleware go because the request goes through the middleware, um, the you can bypass these authorization texts by simply telling the server that you've been through the middleware already. We can do that um, by changing this, by adding this header, x dash middleware dash sub request. And so what we saw with the code was that the application will check whether this has been run through previously to stop any um, any kind of denial service activities to occur and it will come through on this. So what we'll need to do is we need to specify here. Firstly, I'll show you what happens when we do this as false. It doesn't let you through. Um, but if we specify middleware, which is the name of the middleware, then again, it's unauthorized. But because there are five checks, we say middleware, 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 that's four and middleware. 
we bypass the authorization check. So what this does is this header tells the server that we've been through the middleware um, already. We put it out five times because we're telling it that we've been through it five times. Because five, because that was set as the limit, I'll need to get it up so that it makes sense. Um, because that was set as the limit here, this is the max recursion depth of the um, of the request within the middleware. It will then say that's fine and pass you on to the server because it doesn't want to keep it going through the middleware over and over and over again. Um, and so then it gets passed to the server and bypasses any kind of checks within the middleware there. That's basically what the vulnerability is. It's a very simple bypass. Um, there are other checks that you can do which are outlined in, in this article here. But this is the basic start of checking for this. Um, there has been a few nuclei templates that have been created. Um, and yeah, it's for me, I'm like, this was very interesting and a simple bypass. It reminded me a little bit about some of the Palo Alto um, Pan OS uh, authentication bypasses that had uh, similar header issues. Um, that let you just bypass the login. Um, and so that's why I kind of dive, dove into this one. I thought it was a bit interesting. So yeah, let me know what you think um, and whether you found this interesting or not.